But Egypt had not been a colonizing power for centuries before the Persians showed up. Um, they took advantage of existing uh, fissures and you know they, they kind of just uh, swept in over a country that was long past its prime at that point. And they left the pyramids there. Um, Egypt becomes a Hellenized country. Uh, Greek is the second language of Egypt for a thousand years because of Alexander. Because he was... He conquered, he conquered Egypt, them, yeah, right? and part of the Persian Empire, and then part of his. And after him, oh. um, the Ptolemies uh, will then make Egypt their kingdom, and they use Greek. So any any ambitious Egyptian learns Greek for a thousand years because the Romans keep that language going after they so make the, it their province. The Ptolemies were before the Romans came. Yes, in. yeah. Okay. Cleopatra is the last of the Ptolemies. When did the Persians conquer Egypt? They had conquered it under uh, Cambyses. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, or the yeah the the late uh, 6th century BC. Okay, so that's the end of the pharaohs at that point. What Do you know much? I, I mean, you know a lot of broad history here. I don't want to get you on stuff that, that you're less versed on, but do you know like what caused the, the Egyptians at that time to lose the massive power they had? Well, they didn't really have massive power that late. You know, the, the New Kingdom, the really famous Egyptian empire, was at that point um, almost a thousand years in the past. Mm. Um, you know, a after you know, the, the 20th dynasty, the dynasty of Ramses and those guys, um, Egypt had really fallen to pieces. There had been a period where the Nubians conquered all of Egypt, um, another period in which the Libyans had conquered Egypt, the Assyrians conquered Egypt. Um, and there were short-lived native dynasties who ruled between all these foreign invaders. But Egypt had not been a colonizing power for centuries before the Persians showed up. Um, they took advantage of existing uh, fissures and you know, they, they kind of just uh, swept in over a country that was long past its prime at that point. And they left the pyramids there. And left the pyramids there. Because yeah, the, the pyramids are the pyramids. The you know, pyramids you can, are the pyramids. You gotta work pretty hard to get rid of those things. Don't fuck with the aliens. You know, they, exactly. they left it here for a reason. Right, right. They came in peace and built pyramids. Uh, That's right. There's a famous story about an Egyptian, a caliph in the ninth century who tried to destroy one of the pyramids for building material. And he set his men to work for a whole season and all he did was make a big gash in the smallest pyramid and that was it. You can still see it if you go as the Pyramid of Menkare in, 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 can we in pull Giza. That up? The, the Pyramid of Menkare in uh, Men Giza? Uh, Menkare, yeah. And uh, you'll see like, there's a big gash in one side, maybe one of the, a caliph who tried to destroy the pyramid. But uh, there's a, a proverb that um, all things fear time, but time fears the pyramids in Egypt. Um, yeah, the Pyramid of Menkari, that's it. And there's Can a, we type in damage? Yeah, and there, there's, the a, there's, a, there's a big gash on one side. Gash or damage on the end of that and see what that says. Um, it's it's but, not uh, typing. But anyways, it, it's a real thing. <laughs> and um, so, But yeah, the, the Persians um, were not well liked in Egypt. There it is. Yeah, that, that big slot there. Is, uh, what, Wait, what I, I see the camels in the foreground. That's not. That's a small one. Yeah, that's the little one. Yeah, they're, so they're, they, they, he sent all kinds of men, and that's the only damage they did to it. That's it. I mean, they, they took off the casing stones too, but otherwise, yeah. What did he send? Five guys? I don't think they were too motivated. You know, <laughs> <laughs> enough. They're being watched. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, they, unless they were, it's like crazy on the in, the uh, the structure so crazy on the inside that they literally couldn't do anything. In which case, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, it, it just it's just huge. You know, and uh, you know, the fact that you, you, uh, the first time I was in Egypt, and, and you've been, so you know, and, you know the, the sheer scale of these oh. things, um, you know, and, and really why, you know, <laughs> it's easier to get stoned than to pull these giant man-made mountains down. Yeah, th those are yeah. not human-made tombs, man. <laughs> They are, there's, they're, there's, they're impressive. There's um, something, and I'm not saying they're not human-made. I'm saying they're not human-made tombs the way the story tells us that they were made. There's something else there. <laughs> Could it have been humans? Yeah, but it had to be like, I don't want to get too lost in that, but that had to be like another civilization or something because they, they, they just, they're, it's stunning how heavy the material is and how intricate the design is. You know, I'll point out my own expertise to return to the Romans. The Romans yeah. were fascinated by the by Egypt after they conquered it, you know, under Augustus. And some Romans built pyramid tombs around Rome. You've probably seen there's the one, the Pyramid of Cestius. Um, it, it's uh, right outside the Aurelian walls. Um, anyway, so it's, it's, it's about, 100, about 150 feet tall, so 120 feet tall. So not as big, obviously, even as the Pyramid of Mancare. But uh, there's a little inscription on one side that says um, that this guy's slaves built this pyramid in 330 days. Yep. Um, there it is. Yeah, there it is, the Pyramid of Castius. And so the Romans were, I, I thought about doing a video actually about how fast the Romans could have built the Great Pyramid you know, with all of their economies oh, of scale. Oh, that'll go viral. That'd be a fun one. <laughs> see if I do it, but uh, I've got to tackle that topic. So they, um, so they were really fascinated with this. But, 
but but so so anyway, the, the Roman uh, the Persians did conquer Egypt. They did kind of kind of made a mess of it. They didn't respect local customs. Supposedly, Cambyses killed the sacred Apis bull, for example. A what? It's this bull was a symbol of a god, um, the, the the god Apis. I think it's Apis. I don't know if it's a long A. Anyway, um, and he. Um, this 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 bull lives a very good life. He like wears garlands. He like has a special little pasture, you know, and he gets to mate whenever he wants. And he's the the, the avatar of this god Apis, and uh, he's revered. And when he dies, he's mummified and buried in this plus size sarcophagus. You can still see it at Saqqara. Um, mm-hmm. There is a, the, the the these giant sarcophagi where this, the Apis bulls were mummified and buried. Supposedly, Cambyses kills the Apis bull, which is you know. A, it's Big like, no no. It's like spitting in St. Peter's, but right. you know, it, it's really just thing you don't want to do if you want to get the respect of the people you're conquering. Right. Um, Alexander, by contrast, uh, buys right into the whole Pharaoh thing. He has himself shown as Pharaoh and traditional relief carvings. He goes to <laughs> Siwa. They love Alexander. He loves them. Alexandria. Alexandria, right? Which yeah. he founds when he's there. Yeah. Um, and the Ptolemies too. They kind of they convince the priesthood that you know they're they're good allies to have. And uh, that is a large part of why they're so successful in Egypt for the first century and a half of their rule there. Mm. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to the Romans then. That was a great yeah. You know, really into trying, the other you know. part of world history there. <laughs> this guy, the the range Alessi, this guy knows insane. <laughs> but so we were we were talking offline about when when Rome really like hit the exponential yeah. scale in, in, in sizing because there, you know, you can, when you go back far enough, it's like, when I think of history, time is almost exponential. Like mm-hmm. we can think of the last 30 years down to every detail. And then the last 60 to a little less detail, right, right. last hundred to a little less. And then suddenly like it starts to move really fast where you cover a hundred years in the mm-hmm. same way you cover 10 here. So when you get back to like, zero or 100 BC or 200 BC, these years like kind of blend together. But essentially, the ancient Greek empire, which was before Alexander, Alexander, uh right? So now we're talking 500-ish BC, stuff like that. Uh When they're around, Rome is just a city and it's a small idea. Rome is probably about the size of I don't know, modern Monaco. You know, it's tiny. It's a city-state. Okay. Yeah, very small. So... When Rome really starts to say, all right, fuck it, here we go, mm-hmm. it's after Alexander even. Yes. And it's more like, say, around 200 BC, is that right? That's when they have a real empire. I'd say the kind of the, the takeoff point is the third century BC. You know, that's when they kind of go from being a, a large central Italian power to conquering all of Italy and then rapidly, thanks to their wars with Carthage and the Eastern kings. Uh, conquering the whole Western Mediterranean. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here